From a secret location in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. I came for the beer and the bitches. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. More and more stories about people with money or any up living under a freeway entrance or living under a freeway overpass or uh, just living in a cardboard box out the street. There are just many stories like this. And what I don't understand is how it happened. I don't understand this. If you've got money, and I don't care if you're rich or you just make a good middle class living or whatever it is, if you've got money, how do you screw that up? How do you do it? Why would anybody over the age of 10 uh, believe that the economy is going to stay wonderful or that the stock market is going to stay wonderful or that the price of a gallon of gasoline is going to stay below $2? Why? It's just stupid. I guess I had, it was a misfortune as a kid, but as an adult it turns out to be an advantage. I guess I had the misfortune of having parents who overspent, overextended themselves in the early days of credit cards. They really overdid it. When my dad died, his house had a second mortgage and a third mortgage. And frequently what he did was he consolidated his debts and uh, moved up to the next mortgage. Supposedly cutting up his credit cards, but somehow he always had another credit card to run up to the max. As young as 12 years old, I looked at the master charge bill. And I said to my dad, you're going to go broke. He didn't want to hear about that. Fear of going broke, fear of being Ed McMahon, has driven the better part of my adulthood. I have always been afraid of being broke and dependent on other people. Because you can't count on other people. Imagine all the people who thought when the economy went down, they could borrow a few bucks from Ed McMahon. I mean, you just can't count on other people. You can't do it. You know, we all know that Sinbad went on Star Search. Who does he go to borrow a few bucks from when the economy goes on the crapper? Don't call Ed. Ed's broke. He's eating, he's eating Alpo and drinking Budweiser under a freeway underpass. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't resist. I said the Clydesdales, though, they were on the 10 freeway the other day. They paid out a visit. <laughs> Ed, though, is moving. But we do the Slauson cutoff. Ed got a couple offers on the house. I hear that Ed got a couple offers on the house. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was reading that. Of course, the realtor did not say how much the offers were for. You know, these uh, people who are making offers on Ed's house may have done what I did. 
when I bought my second house. I know you're desperate. Here's a lot less than you were expecting to get. <laughs> Just like that. I don't understand how you do it. I don't. Now, I know there's the occasional person who's hit by a bus and can't work. Or have, finds out they have a brain tumor. I understand. But even then, where's your insurance? Don't you put a few bucks away, what they call a rainy day. You know what a rainy day is? I mean, maybe people don't understand that expression. That means to put money away for when things go bad. You know, to hear the people are living paycheck to paycheck, to hear that phrase, why are you living paycheck to paycheck? You're a loser? You couldn't put a few bucks away? I'm not talking about putting a million dollars away. How about putting a few bucks away? You know, I didn't always make this money. When I was uh, 28 years old, I was doing radio and making uh, $28,000 a year. Oh, yes, and I got $10 a week of gasoline at Sunoco. It was on trade on the radio station. Oh, yes. And they gave me $500 in trade from some, some ancient men's clothing store downtown Albany, New York. You know, they thought I should have, like, a suit to go make appearances in, and so they would give me a $500 allowance, and you go down there. And some 75-year-old tailor named Sid is down there, you know, doing chalk marks on these trousers that look like they were designed in 1947. <laughs> yeah, that was great. But even then, I never filed bankruptcy. I never had a house foreclosed upon. I never uh, had nothing, ever. Ever. I've always had credit cards. I've had my American Express card since I was 21 years old. By the way, I don't recommend you do this, but I can reveal this now. You know, when I was 21 years old, you know, you know what I was doing for a living? Uh, essentially nothing. So what I did was I put my application, it was the American Express gold card. I put my application in, and I well, here's what I did. I had two phone numbers. So um, I listed uh, TL Enterprises as the company I worked for, and I put the other phone number as the phone number of the business. And one day a call came in, and somebody called said, Yes, hello, this is American Express calling. Can I speak to the uh, personnel department, please? And I said, Oh, uh, yes, uh, you're speaking to them. Do you have a Tom Likas where Yes, yes, we do. Uh, can you tell me what his annual income is, please? Uh, yeah, it's $120,000. How long has he been with you? Oh, years. What a great employee he is, too. And a week later, I was walking around, thumping my chest and showing everybody my American Express gold card. That, that's how I got American Express card back when I was 21 and... I had, like, no credit at all. Very bad, right? I wouldn't do that now, but uh, that's what I did back then. I, American Express now probably would accept me as a customer if I applied for the first time, but, you know, that's what I did back then. Fudge my resume, faked it with American Express. I did whatever I had to do, but the point is, never would I allow myself to be broke. Never would I allow myself to be in a position to have to borrow from family members or friends. No, I, I just couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Everybody I ever ended up inadvertently borrowing from was somebody who said, come stay in my place, and I couldn't pay the rent. I, I was just sleeping on their sofa. So in the end, I couldn't pay them anything. But you know what? I've caught up with everybody I owed as little as $110 to, and I paid everybody because I hate owing anybody anything. And I could not, even though I considered it three times, I could not file for bankruptcy. I couldn't do it. I have pride, and you know what? If you have to file for bankruptcy, you're an immoral, corrupt loser. That's what you are. 
That's what you are. And I don't care if you're MC Hammer or who you are. If you borrowed more money than you could pay back, it is a sign of a, 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 a sign of a morality issue. When you borrow money from somebody, you better damn well plan on paying it back and paying it back promptly with interest. That's the way the world works, son. And I see that as a character flaw when people don't pay their bills. Are you kidding? Uh, it, whenever I've had known chicks who've had bounced checks, you know, this is back in the days when I had women living with me or married me or whatever. You know, they may have had other issues. We may have had problems in the relationships or what have you. But one thing was for sure. It was never a money issue because I was never with anybody who had ever bounced a check. Never with anybody with a FICO score under 600. Never with anybody who was broke. Never with anybody who'd never had a job or couldn't find a job. Never, I, you know, I was with people who ultimately got lazy after they moved into the Tom Likas uh, palace. Uh, then they got a little lazy, didn't want to work anymore. But at least going in, they never, ever had these issues. Because I, I, it's just as bad for me to be with somebody who can't pay their bills or won't pay their bills as it is to be with a woman who screws every guy in town, whether she's with you or not. It's immoral. It's unethical. It's wrong. So I, I have a very different attitude. When I see these stories about people who can't pay their bills, you know, unless you've got the brain tumor and the surgery is next Wednesday, I, I'm sorry. I don't feel sorry for you. I, I have a very hard time getting up any sympathy. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> all I can say is this. Do we have that list of celebrities? There they are. Oh, yeah, I'm seeing it. Let's see. There's Ed McMahon quoted on the Larry King show. There's uh, former NBA player Vin Baker. Very nice. Angela Bassett. And somebody named Courtney B. Vance. Who's that? <laughs> Courtney B. Vance. Not to be confused with Courtney L. Vance. Yes, the uh, price of their home has dropped more than $2 million in the past year. They have a French colonial in a gated section of Hancock Park. Five bedrooms, seven and a half bathrooms, a gym, a hair salon, a two-story guest house. An agent last year listed it for $5.999 million. Then a month later, took it off the market for seven months. Then another realtor got the house listed for $4.999 million. Then reduced it to $4.6 million. Now it's available for $3.9 million. This gives waiting to exhale a whole new meaning. Just amazing. So they're not bankrupt, but uh, look at that with the house. Unbelievable. Just amazing. <laughs> anyway, I like this story. It has, it, I'm not going to read the whole story, but as a reference to the Danny Bonaducci, I'm not going to. I'm not going to read that quote. <laughs> Didn't you see it? Go to the bottom of the story. All right, I'll read the quote. Fine. <laughs> Fine. This is a guy named Mark David. He follows celebrity real estate. He has a blog called The Real A Stalker. Get it? The Real A Stalker. Yes, he doesn't think prospective buyers are willing to pay top dollar for houses simply because someone famous has lived in them. Of course, what is his expertise? He's a 38-year-old graphic designer who writes under the pseudonym Your Mama. <laughs> Not Yo Mama. Your Mama. Uh, he says, "Prop." This is this is the graphic designer commenting on real estate. Does this guy even own any real estate? He says, "Property values are property values. You've really got to be somebody for it to add cachet. Maybe if it's a major A-list celebrity who's going to go down in Hollywood history, like Jack Nicholson. But does anybody really care about most of these people's houses? Would you pay more for Danny Bonaduce's house?" And he says, "I'm not trying to bag on him." <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> that, ouch. <laughs> My goodness. 
Anyway, uh, I have a very hard time feeling sorry for the people who are, but you know, going to the poorhouse now. People are crying about this, and I'm curious if there's anybody out there who's going through this now: bankruptcy, foreclosure, too many bills, thinking about bankruptcy, married somebody who's uh, not that responsible because you know you were getting uh, that pipe laid in a way it had never been laid before, and then you realize that person is. Uh, you know, taking all the money out of your bank account, there's nothing left. If, if you are currently going through these financial hard times because of the recession, because of gas prices, uh, because of, uh, you know, job cuts, all the job cuts. By the way, I want to, the, the LA Times had that ad saying how great their reach is. I want to say hello to the 250 new employees they're laying off over the LA Times because business is so good. So uh, you all have a lot more time to listen instead of placing ads in the paper saying how much reach the LA Times has. <laughs> Hate to bring that up. No, I love to bring that up. Anyway, if you are currently going through economic hard times, I've got to talk to you right now. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Me and my friends have a little drinking game with your show. For every minute that you're on the phone with a stupid broad... We have two shots. And let me tell you, man, every Friday is party night. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. I want to talk to people who are facing hard times. I have to find out how you did it. Jared on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hey. What do you mean exactly hard time? What exactly? If you, if you, can't, if all your bills aren't paid, if you've ever had to hide for, from a creditor who tried to call you, or if you've ever gone uh, an extra month or two late with a credit card, if you can't pay the rent, if you can't pay a mortgage, then it's hard times. That's true, that's true. All right, so now that you know the classification, does it fit you? Uh, not really, even though I'm out of work. And you know, all you do is just, uh, you know, save your money and, you know, do what you need to do. Do what you need to do. What do you normally do when you have a job? <laughs> uh, nothing right now. I'm no, when, I, did you hear what I said? When you have, let me change the sentence around. Maybe you'll understand it better. When you do have employment, what is it? I don't know. You don't know. A, I'm an apprentice right now. An apprentice what? Uh, millwright. What? A uh, millwright. No, no. Uh, what are you apprenticing at? Uh, construction. I see. Yeah, great time to be getting into that construction business, by the way. <laughs> exactly, huh? Yeah, and uh, you uh, attended Bonham Young University, I take it? Bonham Young? Bonham Young. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Well, I know you didn't attend a college, did you, son? Uh, yeah, I did. Which college was that? And don't say DeVry. <laughs> Or ITT? Don't say that. No. What college or, did you attend? Or 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 or? or uh, we or, know what we know already. Which college did you attend? Uh, Long Beach. I only got my third though. Long Beach. I yeah, yeah. I didn't take my. Now, uh, Cal. You went to Cal State Long Beach. No, the. Oh, you yeah, went to the community no. college. Yeah, the community. You went to the LBCC. Yeah. Does that count? No. Why? Because you didn't even get a degree. And the degree you get... Hey, what, you can still get your, your your Associate of Arts. You're not getting it. And what, what makes you say that? Because you're 28 years old and you're an apprentice in the construction industry. So? So that means to me and you've wasted a lot of time. I don't know if you've been smoking bongs or... Uh, boning your girlfriend or whatever you've been doing, but certainly you haven't been doing anything productive all these years. Oh. Okay. Have you? Okay. Ha what? Are you downing me? Yes. Yes, so, yeah, I am. I make my, I, yeah, I make my bills, though. 
How do you do that? You do you sell weed? Yeah, that's what I do. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Crack cocaine, methamphetamine, you know. Well, that's sarcasm for you, just in case you didn't pick up on that. <laughs> you, you, you sure are witty, Jer. Witty? You talk about witty. I you don't know, know what that means. You know that kid who calls it with autism? He's smarter than you are. That's scary. <laughs> What's autism? Sounds a bit like you. What's autism? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Jared, honestly, how do you pay your bills? You got no job. You're 28. You got no education. How do you do it? I have no clue. How do I do it? I think you're lying. I don't think you pay your bills. You're probably living under the freeway underpass with Ed McMahon. No, it's in the box. What's in the box? No, I live in the box. I need to be Oh, okay. in the cardboard box. I see. What's well, the, what, is this, AC. what is the zip code of the four-level interchange? Of the four-level interchange? I don't know. Okay. Well, can tell you that. This has been a little slice of heaven, Jared. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> this is a joke. <laughs> Bye-bye. Yeah. Great. One eight hundred is is Bonaduce on the line? Yep. Oh jeez. Daddy <laughs> Daddy, do you see this? <laughs> I I'm sorry, dude. I just called up to say one little thing and then I had to listen to all of that. It was so funny. <laughs> well, already, I'm walking to Janet's office because I I'm walking down Sunset Boulevard last night, my girlfriend and I and we met these girls with really great breasts, so I brought them into the studio today, and I wanted to go see if I was in trouble with the boss. And then I heard, all I could hear from the speakers was, my house costs more than Danny Bonaduce's, and I'm bagging on him. So I said, now Tom and I are friends. This is somebody has said this to Tom. Am I right? Of course. I never said that. I don't know how much your house is. Oh, it's great. It's listed at $4.2 million. That's more than mine. Right, my ex, uh, not the new one. Yeah, I got a good deal on the new one. I couldn't, b by the way, this will show everybody, before I explain one thing to you, how close Tom and I are, even if Tom doesn't know it. Do you know, since I've had vasectomy, we'll have no more children, I have named a bit, a radio bit, after you? No! Well, first we got in terrible traffic on your way to your 4th of July party. Yeah. So I started to scream at my girlfriend like it was her fault. <laughs> because that's just my right as the owner of testicles. Yes. So the traffic is her fault, and I scream at her. <laughs> and she says, you're not seriously yelling at me like this traffic is my fault, are you? And I said, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> and then we get closer to your house, and I can almost put a marshmallow out the window and roast it because of the fire. <laughs> And then I go, look at this fire. Could this fire be closer to this guy's house? And she goes, are you yelling at me like I started the fire? And now I realize I'm ridiculous, but I'm stuck. And I go, yes, yes, I am. So now, and I'm not going to start the game for like two weeks because it would be too soon, but we're going to do like kind of an open phone thing where you can just call in and complain about anything you want. But at the end of your phone call, you then have to yell, Damn you, Micus! <laughs> I swear to God, it's a new game, and it's called Damn You, Micus Day. I swear to God, it's a bit. You call them up, and it's just a complaint line. But at the end, we have to blame you. I thought you'd think that was cute. They will blame me. They will blame me for everything. We do it in our house all the time now. <laughs> like something will happen, and both of us, like a dish will break, and both of us at the same time will go, Damn you, Micus! And then we'll have sex. I don't know what you're doing in my life. Right? But anyway, so here's what I wanted to say to yeah. whoever it is that said that, and I don't have the information really, but here's, let me just say what I think I believe. If Tom Lakes' house costs more than mine, all that does in my book is make Tom a slightly better American in the capitalist sense. As an American in a capitalist society, it is your job, it is your patriotic duty to make as much money as you possibly can. The government will then take as much money as they possibly can. You don't know, Miss, and I, if you're defending my honor, thank you, and I appreciate it, but you don't know because I happen to know that Tom Lakes a very... Well, I, well, I understand that this, this paragraph of the story for the Associated Press it doesn't say anything about me. It only I'm going to read it to you. It talks about you, and it's, oh. it says here. Here's what it says. It says uh, there's a guy named Mark David. He writes a blog called The Real a Stalker. Get it? Uh huh. 
<laughs> yes. Uh, now, here is, of course, you see, this guy, of course, must be like one of the top realtors in town, uh, must handle multi million dollar transactions. No, no. He's a 38 year old graphic designer who writes a blog under the pseudonym Your Mama. Oh, my God. And he says, uh, property values are property values. You've really got to be somebody for it to add cachet. He said, maybe if it's a major A-list celebrity who's going to go down in Hollywood history like Jack Nicholson. But does anybody really care about most of these people's houses? Would you pay more for Danny Bonaducci's house? Oh. And he says, and I'm not trying to bag on him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let me say this. No, the answer is no. Because I have tried to sell things of my own under other people's names, thinking that the cachet of Danny Bonaducci would bring me extra money. It doesn't. I have never made an extra dime selling, hey, this car used to belong to Danny Bonaducci. I often get less because they're afraid they're going to get pulled over and some lucky cop's going to find the drugs that rolled out from under the passenger seat that day. Uh, okay? So, no. To answer your query, mister, no. Nobody is going to pay. Uh, if you have gone to Stalkerland, somebody just paid, and then I will let you get back to your wonderful show, mister, I guess. Yes. Uh, somebody just paid... To, $25 million or something ridiculous for a Marilyn Monroe sex tape where you don't actually see sex? Really? Dude, for twenty nine ninety five, I can see 97 people have sex. <laughs> That's what I want. Millions of dollars to see a fat lady maybe do it? That guy's sick. I want what I pay for. And so Marilyn Monroe is going to get you less because she was a big fat girl. You show me... This is the kind of porn I like. I don't know about the kind of porn you like. You show me three really hot girls and six to seven uh, guys uh, really doing it. just kind of to tossing them around like poor, you know, t uh, couch pillows. That's the kind of porn I like. I mean, there are some guys like really gross porn and choking porn and all that porn. I'm not into that porn. I'm into the porn where, hey, I'm down there, you take her, Jimmy. That, that's the kind I like. So, uh, yeah, so the answer to your question, sir, is no. No one is going to pay any extra more for Danny Bonaducci's house. I'm glad I've had this opportunity to tell you that, and I'm more than glad to tell uh, Tom Lex about his new bit, Born on the Danny Bonaduce Show, coming up in a couple of weeks called Damn You Like It! No matter what, my kid just fell out the window in New York City! Damn You Like It! See you, buddy! Thank you, Danny. Danny Bonaduce. How did this turn into me talking about how much my house was worth, and it was worth more than his. I never said that. You can see how his mind works. I have no idea how much his house is worth. He's a little jacked up. I don't read Hot Property, the L.A. Times. I have no idea how much his house is worth. He blamed the fire on you. He did blame the fire on me. The fire, the traffic. Unbelievable. All right, we're going to take a break, and we're going to continue our conversation with people who've fallen on hard times. These are people who, you know, if you can't pay your bills, if you've been foreclosed upon, if you've lost your job, and uh, now you're hiding from creditors, whatever, I want to find out how the hell that happened to you. Tom, Tom. Like us. Like us. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Do you have kids? By design, I do not. You don't? By design. By design? Yes. Exactly. By dictionary. Stupid bitch. It's the Tom Likey Show. Like us in Hollywood at one 800 800 job That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. People have fallen on hard times. Christy, hello. Hi. Hi. How's it going, Tom? Great. What do you want to know? You called me? Yes. All right. This is a story. I moved down here to California from Portland, Oregon, four weeks ago with my boyfriend. And I had a job, I have a job up here, but you go through a long, lengthy interview process before you get hired on. So after four weeks, neither one of us are still pulling in a paycheck yet. And, um, why didn't, why, wait, 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 why didn't you wait until the job was ready? 
Because it wasn't until I got down here to California that I could start the whole interview process. But I didn't know it was going to be this lengthy of an interview process to get fully hired on. Oh, boy. So I had my third interview today, and I still, still the whole, whether you're hired or not, is still up in the air, so I'm still waiting to find out. And let me guess, you have no money saved? We had money saved for the move, but that was spent within two weeks. No, and, no, no, uh, no, but darling, I, when I say money saved, you need to have six months of savings. Uh -huh. Six months of, of living expenses. Yeah. Why don't you have that? Well, I guess we were in too much of a hurry to get down here. So, no, we were we did not prepare ourselves for being out of work for four weeks. But not only that, why aren't you prepared? Like, what if you were in Oregon yeah. and you lost your job? Yeah. And there's a recession and you can't find another job or you find another job that doesn't pay as well as your last job. Right. What would you do? Find any job that I could. Right, but then you would still need something uh, to continue living at the same level you were living before. Then I'd probably seek help from my parents. <laughs> oh, darling, why wouldn't you have money put away? I don't understand. Tell me the reason you object to putting money in the bank. I guess it's it's. I guess it's always been hard for me to put money away. I've always felt like I've lived paid at, paycheck to paycheck. And this current this job that I'm going into is dear, you're, yeah. dear, you're 27 years old. Why are you living paycheck to paycheck? I just recently graduated from college. I just recently got my bachelor's. Why did it take you until 27 to do that? Because first I pursued um, your boyfriend, school. huh? No, massage school. First I started massage school. Massage school. Yes, I'm. Yeah. Why? Why? Yes. Because I thought it would be fulfilling, and it turned out it wasn't fulfilling. So then, what, I thought, what well, in the world made you think that would be fulfilling? Uh, I don't know. I thought I'd enjoy it, and I thought, oh yeah, I'm gonna be. No, you thought it would. No, no, darling, you yeah. thought it was easy. I did. I thought it was an easy. And you were lazy, and you were yeah. too lazy to think or study or take a real test at anything. Right. So yeah, then so. I started the whole. I right, saw so you see. So you see. Really. But again. Everybody's got their, and it's not just you, it's everybody. Everybody's got their excuses. Your excuse is you thought it was fulfilling, but reality is you're lazy. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you're lazy, and uh, by the way, you're becoming a massage therapist is like becoming a beautician. It's like um, uh, opening a nail salon. It's all the same thing. Right. Women who don't want to think. Right. So when you realized that, that uh, being a massage therapist was a lot of work, and it's uh, hard work, too, by the way, uh, it's really manual labor, just of another yeah. kind. Oh, yeah. Then you decided to go to college. I would go to college, yep. And what did you decide to study in college? I got my bachelor's in exercise science. Exercise science. And <laughs> what do you plan to do with a degree? Like, after you've already learned how unfulfilling a massage therapy was... What, what are you going to do with a degree like that, specifically? I want to go into medical sales. So that's the career. That's the job I'm pursuing right Why now. Why didn't you it's pursue it. medical school? Because uh, I didn't want to be a doctor. Because you didn't want to work at it. No, I don't like blood. You don't like work. I don't like blood. Darling, this, you, you could have been a chiropractor. You could have been a, a doctor who doesn't ever see any blood. That's true. But you are lazy and have no interest in doing that. Right. Right. Well, at least I got my bachelor's. So what? You got a bachelor's in something that is not going to help you get a job. But it is going to help me get a job. It's just a long interview process. So what <laughs> What job is this that's taking so long for you to get hired for? Um, should I say the company name? I don't need to know the company. What kind of job is it? Um, it's for supplying rehab products to physical therapy clinics and orthopedic surgeons. It's a sales job. It's a sales job. Which yeah. has nothing to do with your degree. Uh, no, but my knowledge that I got from school will help me in the field. But uh, but I could have got, applied for that job and gotten it. Um, right, because you're a natural salesman. That's my point. But you don't know anything about medical. I don't have to. It's right. sales. Sales, yes. Sales, you don't have to know about the product. That's true. So that's what I got to learn. I got to learn how to sell. Maybe Maybe you should have studied business administration or something that would be useful in college. That's true. True. Maybe I should have got a double major. What, are you going back to school now? No, no, no. I want to be done with school. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Especially now that my student loans are about ready to start kicking it. <laughs> right, and you, but you've got no money. 
I've got no money. Yes, we've got about two hundred dollars in the bank left. How do you let yourself get down to two hundred dollars when you know you've got student loans coming? How do you do that? I'm just curious know. how you do it. It just happens. You're lazy. You know? You're lazy. You don't. you don't think. You don't plan. You like getting boned by your boyfriend. <laughs> probably sp- that that you're doesn't from, happen that much. I'm and, about it, and, right. and then you're from Portland, so you probably like smoke a little weed too. Um. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. That comes natural. To, yeah. Yeah, I, I know. Way hey, been there. Yeah. Been there a hundred times. I know. <laughs> I know. And I imagine if you have moved south to Los Angeles, that uh, you're you, you're not uh, an example of the pork that lives in Portland. Um, I think I'm a sitting image of an Oregonian, but I'm starting to get acclimated to California. How much do you weigh, dear? Uh, one thirty. How tall are you? Five two. Oh, kind of chunky. How do you, how are you going to be uh, uh, in in exercise anything if you look chunky? Ah, but I'm physically fit. Darling, let me tell you something about Los Angeles. I want to update you. Nobody buys that argument here. Okay. okay. You can say that one in Oregon. I'm fat but fit or whatever they say. But but in California, you you either lose the weight or you're just... You can't. Well, here's what matters. You can't say that word on the radio. You can't? No, you can't. It's one of the seven words you can never say on the radio. Oh, what are the other six? <laughs> I can't say them. I'm oh, on the radio. Sorry, sorry. All right. I apologize. Right. Anyway, At least I naturally fit in that aspect. Darling, unless your breasts weigh 40 pounds, you're fat. All right. And I'll, I'll why why does a fat woman want to get into the exercise business? I don't understand. Uh, because by nature, I like to work out. I Wouldn't just make... haven't gotten around to it lately. You just haven't gotten around to it lately. No. It's been so busy. Doing what? You don't even have a job. And now finding job, and you know, I feel kind you, of. You're not looking for a job. You've had three interviews in four weeks. What are you doing with the rest of your time? Oh no, I'm putting my application out there at temp, temp agencies. At temp agencies. Yes, yeah, trying to get some clarity. Here you are, 27 years old, and you're still applying for temp jobs. Oh, I need something in the meantime that this job starts up. And and so by the way, are there phone. no are there no sales jobs in Oregon? Um, there probably is. But why why did you people. come to Los Angeles? And this is now where we're going to get to the nub of the problem here. Okay. W- what are you doing here in Southern California? You, you're telling me uh, with all the businesses in Oregon, there's not one that needs salespeople? My boyfriend brought me down here. He's originally from Cali. And, uh, I see. And why did yeah. he bring you down? What does he do for a living? He's a welder, and he, too, is also a, a welder. He's a welder, yeah. Yeah. So uh, he also went to Bonham Young. <laughs> right? Right. So the two of you just like lay around smoking weed, having sex, no, sending out me. an occasional resume, and you can't figure out why you're not getting anyway. Well, we are faxing our resumes, especially his out like You're crazy. faxing your resume. That's fantastic. And emailing them out like crazy. By the way, uh, you know, ever hear of one of these websites, you know, like monster.com or careerbuilder.com? Yes. Ever yeah, use them? At, yes. That's one. Of, that's how we're prospecting jobs, and really? then also on Craigslist. And the oh, paper. yeah, Craigslist is a great place. <laughs> that's a great place for like child molesters and uh, people who are into kinky sex and yeah, yeah, two hundred and twenty pound BBWs want to be physically fit men. <laughs> All right, what's your what's your advice on be uh, re- be honest, <laughs> darling? Yes. Can't you tell what my advice would be based on the comments I've been making here? <laughs> Lose weight and get a job. Lose weight and get a real job. And if I, I were you, if I were you, darling, I would not be living in California. You, you, the two of you can't afford to live here. Yeah. I don't care what, what job you get. Okay. I mean, how, is that, how much does that sales job pay? Uh, base salary, 36000 plus quarterly bonuses. Which is how much? Quarterly bonuses run anywhere from no. What you're likely to get? How much? Well, but, you know, base thirty six thousand a year. Right. And then, yeah, darling, that won't get you the underpass next to Ed McMahon. Really? No, it won't. I really think you made a mistake coming to L.A. You need to go back. The Tom Likas Show.